Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the module by module explanation of the pharmacy board exam and how I studied for it. Some tips and advice that I would like to give you guys. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, the link will be in the description box down below. Let's continue with modules 4 to 6. Module 4 Module 4 is pharmacology and it is just the basis of pretty much all our knowledge. You can connect it to almost every other module. So it is quite important that you do your best to really understand this subject and master it. It is a really long coverage. I, I didn't even finish reading it. But what's important is master the drug classes that you can and the more common drug classes and know the drug endings you know we have that mab, zumab, umab, pril, in, zepams, everything those drug classes and their endings and you have to know the moa because the moa or the mechanism of action for those who don't know sorry the moa will connect to what it is used to treat what effects it has, what adverse effects it might have, but even what kind of toxicity it has. And the MOA will also help you know if it can treat or if it can counter another drug. And that drug, you have to know the MOA, so it'll just be connecting the dots everywhere. For brand names, yeah, I read a lot, but none of it came out, but that's okay. We also have pharmacokinetics which you have to truly understand there's really important principles which will underlie the metabolism absorption distribution excretion of other drugs and it will also help explain why drugs work this way and it will help explain other principles in other subjects as well as for toxicology it's mostly just familiarizing and reading there's some terms you need to know and tables of antidotes and poisons and what they smell like, things like that. Not much on that, but still read up. Module 5 Module 5 is pharmaceutics. Now, it's also one of the more boring subjects that I don't like, but it's still a 17.5%. Physical pharmacy, you have to understand. The equations are easy to familiarize if you are able to connect and relate what happens in the equation, like for example, Stokes equation. You have the density of the particles as well as the viscosity and the sedimentation rate and so on. So understanding the equations will help you familiarize them better, better and will help you solve better. There are a lot of laws that you need to know and confusing names just work your way around it. You also have to differentiate the terms well like crystalline and amorphous but there's just few important terms here and there that you need to familiarize in rheology, micromeritics and tonicity. Tonicity was quite important. Tonicity as well as colligative properties. You need to know how to solve for those. As for jurisprudence, I must say there wasn't much. All that came out was 9994 and 8423. So what I just did really was read and read. And sometimes I would be like relating it to real life. Like, oh, so that's the punishment for this thing. Or like, oh, so that's allowed, but that's not allowed. Or, oh, so these are the requirements to become a pharmacist or to be board of pharmacy and this is how la long I can be board of pharmacy things like that as for manufacturing and dosage forms they go hand in hand so you need to know the a lot you need to know the different dosage forms solid semi-solid liquid their specific advantages and disadvantages not some only like which are the fastest dissolving or the most convenient whatever is and what they're used for, obviously suppositories are not meant to be taken orally. And the route of administration, such as injections, the angle and specific places like the glutes and the delts for intramuscular. Definition of terms and basic comparison. 
like for the composition there's extracted fluid extracts there's extracts there's aromatic waters and so on the use the gargles versus mouthwash and the components the components also have different classifications like binder diluent anti-adherent uh, flavorant preservative and they have different per uh, percentages as well and starch for example can function as several things in tablets and there's also different kinds of coatings there's also different classifications under the materials like ointment bases the oleaginous and so on and you have the aqueous and non-aqueous coating and enteric coating as well then you have your natural gums and your finely divided gums and then you also have to know some equipment and what they're used for and these stupid names like cereal and oh, cup and bob and coet and things like that just you know make some little symbols for yourself make some clue context for yourself to make it easier you also have to know methods and processes so dry and wet granulation and the steps involved and the advantages and disadvantages of each um, things like the containers as well the types of glass and the types of paper and what they're used for and not what they're not used for um, also the basic radio pharmaceuticals that's also i think that was also in module one there's just a simple table of the basic radio pharmaceuticals you don't have to go like way into it because you're gonna get really confused just the basic ones for pharmacy last but not least is module six module six is qa and qc as well as microbiology and i don't like qa qc but i do like microbiology um What's important in microbiology is classifying and separating the bacteria, the viruses. Do you know there's these like flow charts that will really help you as well as drawing. What I did was make flow charts and then color them differently like for gram positive and gram negative, um, the violet and the pink because that will also relate to the basic um, information about microbiology such as the staining methods and the uh, aerobic anaerobic there's also some um, terms which you know the need to know the definitions of um, as well as some people and like what I said a while ago you just need to make a story with the people like um, Francisco already said this but then Spallanzani was like no and then rule of virtue was like biogenesis and they were like why and he was like I don't know I don't have an explanation so, things like that. Uh, there's also chemotherapy in mod uh, microbiology. So the drugs, which you already know from module 4, as well as from organic chemistry, will be repeated here. You need to know the MOA again. And there's some DOCs or drugs of choice you need to know. It's easier to group it as a whole. Like, what's the DOC for trematodes? What's the DOC for gram-positive bacteria? And then once you've mastered those, then you can like incorporate some specifics like for MRSA or vancomycin resistant. There's also classes such as cytol and static, protein synthesis inhibitors, nucleic acid, uh, cell wall disruptors, cell membrane, and so many more. Another thing that helped me aside from YouTube was this show that I watched during my lunch breaks called monsters inside me and if you haven't watched that show it's on animal planet and it's really cool and i think you can search it on youtube they present these cases these patients with symptoms and there's no diagnosis yet and they're trying to diagnose it and it could be um hepatitis it could be adenovirus sometimes it was aspergillus sometimes it was strep sometimes there was one time it was a battery in the throat and another time where there was just like a metal thread from a barbecue brush in the intestines it's a cool show so like i said make studying fun and next is public health i don't really f i didn't focus on that so what i just did was read up and put some things to mind some of it was logic obviously and relate to current events as much as possible 
because they might include um, details of certain diseases that are rampant at that time and how to treat it or like vaccines like Ding Baksha, but that wasn't in our exam. And last is QAQC. I don't like it. Um, you just have to know definition of terms as well as several equations and criteria and like you need to retest if this many failed like biogen testing, sterility and so on raw materials, specifications and who needs to check it um, there's also tables about bioassays, the animal used, the drug used those are useful to know, there were several questions as for the solving, again, I just recommend that you solve your own way. So, aside from everything that I just talked about, there are some things that I'd like to special mention, like YouTube and Google. Specifically on YouTube, um, I recommend Speed Pharmacology as well as Pygmonic. I'll leave their links down below. Uh, backup questions are really useful. Especially, especially for module 1 and module 6. There's literally copy-paste questions. So keep on reading Paco. Um, apps, applications, phone applications like Quizlet and Pitch really help me save time. And also when I just don't feel like studying, those little uh, cards. You can also make your own cards to just help you study even when you don't feel like studying it. So all in all, my advice is reading and understanding. Make it fun, make it memorable. Repetition and consistency is key. I wish you the best of luck on your exams, be they the board or not. And if you ever need any more help, feel free to comment or chat or reach out to me. And please like and subscribe. Bye.